welcome to DeSoto Presbyterian Church. We hope you will join us every Sunday until the end of the coronavirus emergency. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. Reading from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the Spirit put you to death, the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we, do not, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into another's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. 
What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind that blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us worship God. Mighty God, in whom we know the power of redemption, you stand among us in the shadows of our time. As we move through every sorrow and trial of this life, uphold us with the knowledge of the final morning when, in the glorious presence of your risen Son, we shall share in his resurrection, redeemed and restored to the fullness of life and forever freed to be your people. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson this morning comes from Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voice of those who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphs to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now this has touched your lips. Your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a Sunday where we explore and celebrate the triune God that we worship, three and one. And I heard a story about a Sunday school teacher who taught young children. She had taught for many years, and she was very proud of herself for being able to teach such complex subjects as the Trinity to very small children. Now, she knew they didn't understand it fully, but she felt like she helped them to get a grasp on the ideas. One Sunday, one Trinity Sunday, after spending time with her small charges, she felt pretty good about the way they had reacted, felt like they had gotten the concept. And then, as she was walking down the hall, she heard one of the little girls skipping along and singing, 
Casper, the Holy Ghost, the holiest ghost I know. Somehow, I think that must have deflated her a little. The concept of the Trinity is hard for children to understand. It's hard for us to understand. One person that's made of three people, not three faces, not three presentation, but three people in one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They stand together as one God, now and forever. And that sometimes is hard. We can compare it to different things. I've used ice, water, and steam in children's sermons. And while they have the same makeup, they don't three all exist in the same environment. Whereas the Holy Spirit, God, and Jesus know no such limits. Because in God, anything is possible. Nicodemus in our scripture wanted to know more about what this Jesus was saying. He had heard his discussions and he came, he came by night. In the undercover of darkness, he came to find out what all this news was about. Now, why did he come by night instead of coming in the middle of the day? He was a Jewish leader. He probably didn't want his neighbors talking the other people asking him questions. So he kind of hedged his bets and came at night. And as they were talking, Jesus challenged him. He says, this is what this is about. This is the triune God. This is what God wants from his people. And how can you be a leader of the Jews and not understand that? Jesus spoke most closely about the Trinity in this, describing the actions of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. He talked about being born again, except the word isn't used again. We use that a lot. But it really says in the, in the original version, it's born from above. And of course, we know that Nicodemus didn't understand this at all. How can I go back in my mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus says, no, you have to be born from the spirit and water. You have to be born again, born anew, born from above through baptism. The waters of baptism mark the outward sign of an inward change. They're not magic in and of themselves, but they show a level of being part of God's world. You're born again, born anew, when you become a child of God. And the last verse of this scripture is really what it's all about. As Jesus sums it up, he tells us exactly what God intended. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. He's not here to condemn us. He's not here to condemn people for their wrong actions or their wrong beliefs. He's here to bring salvation to those who believe. And salvation is available for everyone. There are no exclusions. Jesus didn't say, I've come to bring salvation to observant Jews, or I've come to bring salvation to those who believe and give 10% to my church. He didn't limit salvation in any way except that they had to believe. And that is a huge gift. It's a gift for everyone, no matter what they believe or where they are. If they choose to follow Christ, they will have everlasting life. It is a gift for us who have already chosen to follow Christ, 
we will have eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you have called us to follow in the ways of your risen Son and to care for those who are our companions, not only with words of comfort, but with acts of love, seeking to be a true friend to all. We offer our prayers on behalf of the church and the world. Be with those who suffer. Surround them with your healing love. Give them peace. Give them hope and give them healing. Be with those in positions of power and leadership. Give them wisdom to make decisions that are for the good of all the people as they wield the power to affect lives. Give them a heart for you that they too may know what true wisdom is. Be with the church as we prepare to begin again to meet in person. Give us the courage to reach out to those in need, to use our opportunity to recreate the church in your image, to become a better follower of the true risen Christ. And together we pray as you taught us saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you 
and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. To send your tithes and offerings, the address is DeSoto Presbyterian Church, Post Office Box 548, DeSoto, Texas 75123. You can also find us on Facebook.com, DeSoto Presbyterian Church, and our website, DeSotoPresbyterian.org. Please share this video with friends and neighbors.